it says the man's departure. So it's the book of Job, verse 20, I'm sorry, chapter 20, verse, um, where should we start from? All right, let's start from verse 19. So it says, because he have oppressed and have forsaken the poor, the right, so the oppression and the forsaken of the poor, you're talking about the so-called Negro, Hispanics, and Native Americans, all right, Israelites, as, which is their true nationality according to the Bible. Because Esau Edom, which is today known as the so-called white man, because he's oppressed the Israelites, basically, this is what is judgment that's written in, in the stone. <laughs> of the word, all right, of the heavenly father's will. So it says, because you have oppressed and have forsaken the poor, because you have violently taken away an house which you builded not, right? The house that he didn't build was, was the children of Israel. That's the monument, Zion, unto the heavenly father, all right? So reading on, it says, um, verse 20, surely he shall not feel quietness in his belly, all right? The quietness in his belly is a settling of everything, his, his agenda coming to a halt and basically being cemented, all right? So it says, um, surely he will not feel quietness in his belly. He shall not um, save of that which he desires, all right? Because, and that's really talking about the agenda that we're in the midst of, all right? The new normal, all right? Another word for the new world order. Verse 21, there shall none of his meat be left. Therefore shall no man Right, headed by the Rothschilds banking family. All right, they have the fifty-one. They, they, they're stake, fifty-one percent stakeholders over all the resources on this earth. All right, which makes them the rulers of this earth. All right. Reading on, it says, um, uh, verse twenty-one: There shall none of his meat be left. Therefore, shall no man look for his goods. All right. So no one's gonna look for this kingdom when these things come to pass. So I said, said I. Verse 22, in the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. All right, so when he's about to fill his belly, in the, in the fullness of his agenda, he's gonna be in straits. And the word straits basically means he's gonna be in a, a trouble. Time, basically, all right, he's gonna find him. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. All right, and the word there for wicked, all right, basically goes back to the word um, laborer, which is talking about the children of Israel, headed by the elect of the nation of Israel. All right, because it tells you precept for that is the book of Jeremiah, the 16th chapter. The Lord said he sent for many fishers, and they shall fish them, being the elect. All right, all you got to think about. Right, basically he's gonna make them fishes of men to fish the elect of the nation of Israel. Alright. And basically, um in the book of Jeremiah sixteen it says, After they after shall I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them. And that's basically talking about the spiritual power, okay? The book of Amos the ninth, uh, the ninth chapter basically goes into that. About them being hunt, hunted from the rocks of the mountains and these various things. Right? So let me read it again. Job 20 and 22 says, In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked, wicked shall come upon him. All right? Verse 23, When he is about to fill his belly, the Most High shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him, and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. All right? So when he is about, when he's eating, that's why it says, He shall not feel quietness in his belly. Because basically he's going to be in the midst of digesting the agenda that he wants to establish, and basically the Most High is going to cut, make that 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 um, you know in an hour basically everything that he built come to naught. All right. So it says, um, 
I'll read it again, verse 23. When he is about to fill his belly, the Most High shall cast his fury, cast the fury of his wrath upon him, and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. All right? Verse 24, he shall flee from the iron weapon, and the bow of steel shall strike him through. All right? Let me read this, and then I'm going to go back to um, the point being in Judges 11, 5 and 11, sorry. So it says, verse 24, he shall flee from the iron weapon. Now Job is describing something. Remember, these prophets, they're going by the things they had before them at that time, all right? Because what were they? They were visionaries, all right? As it tells you in the book of Samuel that in times past, they, the prophets were known as seers, all right? people would basically go up and say let's go into the sphere and the reason why they were known as seers is because they would see the heavenly father would show them a vision and in that vision they would basically write down that vision that they were shown and it would be known as a prophet a prophecy sorry so they're basically gonna foretell a sign that's gonna happen that the heavenly father made them privy to all right so now job in that time he basically wrote spoke of an iron weapon all right because back then there was no form of technology known as an ICBM, known as a missile, right? He had to go by what he could basically identify it as in that time. And the way he could identify it was as it being a weapon of iron. And the reason why he understood it was a weapon is because of the destruction that it brought after it fell upon the earth, all right? So let me read this again. So it's the book of Job 20 and 22. It says, um, actually 24, it says he shall flee from the iron weapon, and a bow of steel shall strike him through. So I said a bow of steel, all right? Because basically, a missile. What? What? What's the that? What's the um? What does a, a missile look like? It looks like a bow, all right? A bow of steel, as he's being, you know, rightly described. It. So it says, um, shall strike him through. Verse twenty-five. It says. It says, it is drawn and cometh out of the body, all right? So when it's saying it is drawn and cometh out of the body, it's basically talking about the missile coming out of the earth and being coming out of, um, ascending out of a silo, all right? Because that's the ancient, te that's all these things, that the Heavenly Father said it, there's no new thing on the earth, all right? A silo and a missile is basically a bow and an arrow, all right? The silo is where the, the bow basically comes out and then shoots up to its desired target, all right? So I'll read it again, verse 25, and it is drawn and cometh out of the body. Yea, the glistening sword cometh out of his gore. Terrors are upon him, all right? All darkness shall be hid in his secret places. A fire not blown shall consume him. It shall go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle, all right? So a fire not blown, right? Why did Job say a fire not blown? Because usually if you want to create a fire, there's a process to it. You have to get the lint, you know, um, um, a flammable substance, depending on what it is. And you basically have to um, use it. However, whatever process that you use to basically build a fire, you have to go for a process. And then as you have the little um, the spark, what you have to do, you have to blow on that fire, all right? To basically create a greater fire, to give it some form of fuel. Alright, so this is what it says on this. It says, verse 26, it says, um, All darkness shall be hid in, the, in his secret places. A fire not blown shall consume him. Alright, and the only thing that can prevent a fire not blown is basically a missile. Alright, a missile is a fire not blown because the moment it strikes, there's an instant explosion. Alright, so that's what it's talking about. Let me go back to the book of um, Judges. Build upon this point in Judges 5:11. It says, "They that are delivered from the noise of the archers in the places of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord." All right. So the first point, the point is, as it says, "They that are delivered from the noise of the archers in the places of drawing water." So the noise of the archers is a missile. All right. So let me build upon that point. Now, another angle to deal with.
Now, this is the book of Isaiah 54 and 16. It says, Behold, 